Happy birthday to <laughs> Zoe. Happy birthday to Zoe. Okay. But it's not my birthday. It's tomorrow. It's your birthday eve. There's no birthday eve. It is. What the? F it's birthday eve. You got to turn off the TV. Oh, cash app is Zoe nigga. Oh. oh <laughs> Yo, my birthday is tomorrow, everybody. It's, it's tomorrow, so it's your birthday eve. Birthday what? eve. Wait, are they saying no sound? Can you guys hear? Testing one, two, one, two. Can you hear? We're good over here. Can y'all hear? Can you hear me? Can you hear the love tonight? <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? Happy early birthday, though. See, that's what I'm talking about. It's about the early birthday. Yeah. 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 Y'all better, y'all better hit my brother Cash App. Y'all better hit that Cash App for his birthday and buy a book. Back to you. Zoe. You gotta buy the book. You gotta buy the book. <laughs> uh, I want people to buy the book, man. Yes. If you buy the book, you're gonna get. Uh, an hour of coaching and boy oh boy I had like five six coaching sessions <laughs> this weekend it was a lot oh. you know it was a lot but I feel like I helped some people uh, I feel like I got some things started for some people so it was it was good everybody go to my website mrzowhat.com and order a copy of the shrouded lighthouse you can purchase whatever book you want, but if you order a copy of The Shrouded Lighthouse, you're going to get a free one-hour coaching session with me. Now, the coaching session is going to happen on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's when the coaching session is going to happen, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those are my times. People are trying to move things around. Can you do it during the weekday? No. Okay. Let me say it again. <laughs> I'm available on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's when I schedule the coaching session. Sunday, yesterday, I had about four on Sunday. So it's a free coaching session for sure. Free coaching session if you purchase The Shrouded Lighthouse. Go to my website right now, theshroudedlighthouse.com, theshroudedlighthouse.com. Order your copy of The Shrouded Lighthouse. No, is is that the website? Mr. Zowat? Mr. Zowat, right? Yeah, Mr. Zowat.com. Mr. Zowat.com. Order The Shrouded Lighthouse. Yeah. Once you do that, then take a snapshot of your digital receipt and email it to VOR106 at gmail.com and say, Zoe, I want my coaching session. Boom. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. And then I'll hit you back. I'll give you the business line. I'll tell you what time to call or we'll figure out what the schedule is for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it's on and cracking. Oh, don't think these ain't leaving. I These sell so much. I got to put the postal, the labels inside of the the, the bag with the he is risen. He is risen, Dr. Russell from Russell Herbals, Dr. Russell Harrison from Russell Herbals created this little bugger. Boy, boy. Man, if you don't, hey, stop playing. Go, go to my website. And tap in. He is risen. R Z N Russell Zoe and nephew. When I tell you, when I tell you, when I tell you, this gets you right. If you having trouble trying to ride, we got something that'll get you up. Hey, praise the Lord. Well, more importantly, it's 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 healthy. Oh, that's, that's to me. That's the the crux of this thing. Oh, okay. It's healthy. This is not a gas station swipe pill this is this is the limitless pill for libido oh. this is the limitless pill for libido 
Dr. Russell Harrison is one of the foremost foremost detoxers. He knows how to get you clean. He knows how to detox you. And if I'm slurring a little bit, just know that I just came from the dentist. And, and my mouth is still a little <laughs> numb. My mouth sounds nice. <laughs> Check one. <laughs> My man. <laughs> but yes, uh, Russell Harrison, man, he is no joke. Go to his website, RussellHerbals.com for his detoxes. I have taken his detox five times. Phase three, five times. And when I tell you, it, it has done a world of good for me. So go to RussellHerbals.com, support his his brand, his business. And don't forget, on my website, you can get exclusively, He is Risen, the Limitless Libido Pill Limitless. from Russell Herbals, RZN, Russell Zoe, and Nephew. Go there right now. And then let's get a, that's what I'm saying, Nazarene X. Can we get 100 copies of my book sold let me tell you what 100 copies is exactly because it's your birthday tomorrow your birthday. let me tell you what 100 copies would look like for me it's two boxes it's two and a half boxes of books and i have a mountain of books in my living room 100 copies is also 100 free coaching sessions Right. That means that's a hundred coachings. I got to deal with a hundred people and they problems and, and, and try to map out something, a course for them to find some kind of understanding with themselves. Jeff Brown's birthday <laughs> was on the 20th. Ah, it was Saturday. Happy it birthday, was Saturday. Jeff. Happy I called birthday. Jeff Brown and said, what's happening, Jeff? We chopped it up for a minute. The Jeff Brown. The Jeff Brown. Oh. So the goal for today, can we get 100 copies? That's two and a half boxes, right? Because in each box, there's 40 books. So two boxes is 80 books, and another half makes it 100 books. Can we do it? You're going to get a free coaching session. Go to MrZoWhat.com. Order the Shrouded Lighthouse right now. And I got two more bags of these. So in each bag, there are, I think, 25. So that means 50. No, I think I got three bags of these. I got three more bags of these. So let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Oh, total package energy. Got to support Total Package Energy, black-owned business, up in the Bay Area, energy shots, for real deal energy shots. Been doing it, been rocking with us for over eight years now. We've been going, 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 going. Total Package Energy, feel-good energy, the energy shot that's using nanotechnology. It's going to get into your bloodstreams quickly, quickly, quickly. Go to TotalPackageEnergy.com. Cash mob all of the businesses that we put in front of you. The purpose is for black people to cash mob the black businesses and keep them afloat, keep them going. You know, I'm a black-owned business, uh -huh. a self-published author. So support the brands. TotalPackageEnergy.com is one of the brands. Also, come on in here, good brother. Also, I want you guys to support Beal Sauce. If it ain't Beal, it ain't real. All right? We want you to support those, bland, those brands. 1-800. What am I talking about? 1-800. Support <laughs> Beal Sauce. Like, what number is that now? I'm sorry. I was about to give out somebody's phone number. Bill sauce. If it ain't real, it ain't Bill. Also, Shepherd's Sweets. Shepherd's Sweets. Oh, uh, your local Texas girl. What in the world? Come on. For Whoa, your Chitlin hey. Pim. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, Whoa. Hey, 
tomorrow. It's, but damn, it's all birthday right. Birthday Eve. Hey. Birthday Eve. All right. Birthday okay. Eve. All right. All right. All right. All right. I love it. 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 Please what continue. Part of Texas? I'm sorry. I'm nosy. Wow, somebody in there turned up. What's hey. up? Shepherd Sweets. I want you guys to support the black owned business. Uh, master of confectionery delights, cakes, cookies. Uh, the candy is crazy. Uh, man, it's, please support that brand. Please support that brand, the black owned business. Shepherd's Sweets. Please continue, continue, continue to support. Uh, throughout the show, I'm going to be reminding you that we are having a drive here. We want to push 100 copies of the Shrouded Lighthouse. We want to push 100 copies of the a Shrouded Lighthouse. And let me just say this. For everybody who buys a He Is Risen, they should also buy a Shrouded Lighthouse. Because trust me. No, I ain't going to put that out there. But, yeah. yes, if you buy He Is Risen, buy the Shrouded Lighthouse. If you buy the Shrouded Lighthouse, buy He Is Risen. Make it a double pack. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Support these black-owned businesses. Support my book. Support my work. Now, let's get right to it. Hey. Let's get right to it. We're running late. I um, think it's it's my fault we're um, running late. No, it's, it was a technical issue. It had nothing to do with you. No, I was I was here before eleven, but barely. Barely. Let's just talk about it right now. If you live under a rock or have been living under a rock, you probably don't know anything about it, but I think the world knows about it. Legendary Jim Brown, yeah. NFL legend and Hall of Famer and activist, dies at eighty seven. Arguably the greatest player in NFL history and a champion for social activism. Former Browns running back Jim Brown died on Thursday. Now, man, we could be reading accolades and we could be reading, you know, stats and all kind of stuff forever as it pertains to this brother. You know, he's done a lot. He's lived a lot. He, he did a lot in his life. But I prefer to talk to somebody who really knew him. Who really knew him. This man sitting right next to me. Bobby Glanton Smith. Yes, Lord. Knew Jim Brown the way I know Bobby. <laughs> or even better and let me tell you something man Bobby I'm, I'm a student of your wisdom brother I'm a student of your wisdom you, you have put me and my family in position to not only meet Jim Brown which is enough for one lifetime but Jerry West and and many other Keith David and and many others, man, and, and I just want to salute you for just being a man that, that connects the dots when you see quality. You see some people, you say, man, these good people, man, let's connect the dots. You didn't have to do that for Nuriel. You took New right to the spot. And, man, I, I'm just thankful for you, brother. I'm thankful for you, man. You know, Jim Brown has had a hell of a fucking impact on your life. Because you have a hell of an impact on mine and my kid. You know what I'm saying? Talk to us about Jim Brown. Well, first of all, I'd like to say uh, thank you, brother, for letting me be myself. Oh, yeah. Yet again. And um, although Jim is absent from the flesh, he will remain and endure a part of the DNA of everybody that he blessed with his presence, his knowledge, his generosity, mm -hmm. and his commitment to affecting positive social and economic change. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we, you know, accept the reality that he is, again, uh, gone with the wind, so to speak, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it still whistles by us each and every day. It still yeah. whistles by us. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that, man. And, um, I, I try to think 
as he would want me to think. Eliminate the negative, establish the facts, and choose your best options. And mm. my best option today is to continue the work that he has an imprint on. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was running late this morning for good reason, because I was on the phone talking to a gentleman uh, by the name of Jalen Brown. He's uh, just retired from the NFL. He played for the Tennessee Titans and the Las Vegas Raiders. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'm inspired by is I was introduced to him by another person very close to uh, Jim Brown, Mike Lage. Uh, mm -hmm. He managed uh, Jim's money for many years. Mm -hmm. And he called me up a few days ago and said, Bobby, I got a guy that has... Uh, recently uh, retired from the NFL, and uh, he's looking at trying to find a pathway to uh, further wealth building. Because he took care of his money while he played. He was a Long Beach Poly kid. Oh, smart yeah. guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and, and went to, uh, uh, to great lengths to let Mike know that he was looking to you know, tap into something uh, mm -hmm. that he could do beyond football. And uh, after speaking with him, it dawned on him. I said, your last name is Brown also, you know, and uh, your first name is J. So the JB is still with me. <laughs> to some and, and we just got off the phone a few minutes ago with the president of the National Association of uh, Minority Contractors, Wendell the Stemmen, the name you're very familiar with by now. Mm -hmm. And we broke it down to him how he's a part of legacy building now of a person who bears the same initiatives. Mm -hmm. and, and he took to heart what we were talking about and what we're doing in Tennessee right now. The Tennessee Titans are getting ready to build a $2 billion uh, new stadium. Really? Okay. The Kroger Company, uh, which out here, I guess the, the interface would be Albertsons. Or Ralph's. Or like that. Ralph. Yeah, Ralph's. Ralph's, not Albertsons, Ralph. Yeah. Uh, they're getting ready to build a billion-dollar campus in Nashville, Tennessee. Really? One billion with a B. So that's three billion dollars right there. And in my hometown of Murfreesboro, they're building a new charter school in a community that's, you know, a part of my neighborhood. Hmm. All right, they're gonna spend half a billion dollars hmm. on that. Now, historically, the problem has been when people think of contracting, mm -hmm. they think of general contractors as it relates to the construction process. Mm -hmm. What they don't take into consideration that we are, I'm here today to talk about because this applies to some things that we're working on here in Los Angeles as well, mm -hmm. and around the country, and around the world. Because mm -hmm. Wendell just got back from three weeks in, in the Far East. And I lost a lot of sleep, man, because it was a 15 hour time to <laughs> <laughs> But right. it was necessary to further the work. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting at is, we, I'm here to talk about getting our people to understand contract compliance mm -hmm. and its relationship to the Constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. And as we, begin to come, as we begin to become more cognizant of the importance of understanding the relationship between the Constitution mm -hmm. and our ability to make a living and to live with dignity and safety, mm -hmm. these kinds of issues, mm -hmm. Here's our chance to begin to put the, the dots together mm -hmm. and to lock arms around common objectives. Mm -hmm. I doubt very seriously there's anybody watching the show right now that doesn't want a better quality of life. Absolutely. We also understand why everybody's frozen right now, because in the last four years, everything turned upside, upside down. down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So... It's the best and worst of times mm -hmm. as a result of that. And as it relates to me being here in the spirit of this brother man who uh, just let me, it, it, basically he showed patience, man. And you know, like you say, you know me as well as anybody. I can lead a, I can lead a plantation. <laughs> I, can, I can go south, all right? And so it takes a certain kind of person to deal with the good and the bad, the crooked and the straight of Bobby Glanton Smith. Man. And those who survived the cut, I sow into them the way they sow into me. Right. And that's what brings me here today is to begin to use this platform from time to time 
to connect those very important dots. Because here's what contracting is. Everything that you do, everything that, that, that Sarah does, everything that anybody that has a, 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 a skill mm-hmm. or a gift mm-hmm. can actually benefit from the contracting process, if you understand the contract compliance. Mm-hmm. For example, on the projects that I just mentioned in, in Tennessee, the Titan Stadium, mm-hmm. the, uh, the the Kroger campus that they're going to build, mm-hmm. and um, uh, the new uh, charter school in Murfreesboro. Charter school. All of them have in it the constitutional precepts of the right to work. Mm. And if you understand the use of that, you can be a part of writing the script for that. Because what they'll do is they'll say 25% participation for minorities. Hmm. Okay, now what is ha- what is a minority in 2023? It's everybody but black people. <laughs> so you can comply with a contract mm-hmm. and leave black people out of it if you don't know how to march people back to the original concept of the right to work, and then you'll have to be able to explain to people like myself and Zoes and other people who were willing to ask these very important questions, where are the people that was here on this planet that is now called North America Mm -hmm. before anybody else, and why aren't they a part of this constitution that you created that you done left some key pieces out of? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. if you don't know, it's time for us to find out how contracting works in well, order how for they, it to work for How do us. they connect with you, Bobby, in order to, to answer those questions? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, I don't have a problem uh, receiving private phone calls at this stage because everything that we're working on right now is urgent. Because once we get the, the, the blueprint modified mm-hmm. and included, it goes worldwide. Because mm-hmm. one of the reasons Africa has never been uh, interface with uh, black Americans is that we didn't have anything to offer Africa in terms of what we should be in a position to do because where they extracted us from and brought here to some degree, with mm-hmm. the exception of some of us who have Native American blood, mm-hmm. which is a part of breaking this stuff down as well. I'll get to it at a different time. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is we can't help anybody until we help ourselves. And we can't help ourselves until we understand what to fight for. Because mm. we'll scuffle for nothing. For nothing. Okay. For absolutely nothing. All day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes down to knowing that, okay, here's where we're going to put ten toes down. Right. And, and, and we're ready to go either to the cemetery <laughs> or to somebody else's funeral. Right. You see what I mean? Because we're ready to die or kill for this stuff. Right. And, and that's why I'm here to get out there is that we have options. Right. If we're willing to step back and take a breath and say, look, what is most important to our stability, our security, to our possibility for prosperity, uh, the salvation of what people call culture? Mm-hmm. All of these things are in play right now. And what we have to do is understand when and where to fight. And this is a battle that we need to be all engaged in. And how we go about that is two things. Mm-hmm. If you want to just get more information from me. Um, 310-256-5326. I'm, I'm giving that number out with the, 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 the following caution. If it's a frivolous call, it'll be a short call. And that's fair to both of them. Because I don't want to waste your time and I can't afford for you to waste mine. Right. If it's so a frivolous one, call. Yeah. It's going to be a short call. Uh, 310-256-5326. Um, my email address is gl. A N that G L A N T O N Smith all together the letter B at gmail.com. That's G L A N T O N Smith the letter B at gmail.com. Uh, and and I'm, I'm open to uh, all conversations because these are things that if you do know and we benefit, and like they say, the, the rising tide does what? Lift all ships. Yeah, yeah right. And yes, see, uh, <laughs> otherwise, we're going to be patching holes in the Titanic. My Lord. You see, <laughs> and we Lord. really can't afford to be doing that right about now. So and, let me ask you something real quick. Sure. What are some of the tenets of the American program, the philosophy that the great Jim Brown put together? Because he literally created a philosophy, am I correct? Well, 
and, and I'm glad you put it that way so that we can we can include a number of people who contributed mm -hmm. to the development of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, the name Amer I Can came from Dion Warwick. Talk to us then. Yeah. I'm listening. Whoa. And uh, you are my friend, Dion Warren. Yeah, <laughs> and my friend too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, Dion and Jim and some other people uh, quietly had real serious relationships mm -hmm. around nation building. Mm -hmm. And she was in that circle. And mm -hmm. so she said, "What about the name Amer I Can? The mm -hmm. same letters, just put them hyphens between the I." Mm -hmm. And and Jim like. Yeah, and the one thing about Jim, you give that man something solid to work with. It's on and cracking. It's going forward. <laughs> He's not going to run out of bounds. Right. <laughs> so the other thing that he did, because uh, he had enough uh, uh, credit. He, didn't, he graduated without declaring a major. Mm. And they almost didn't let him graduate till he told me, he said, where in your constitution, where in your paperwork does it say that you have to declare a major? You say you have to have a certain amount of credits in a particular discipline. Hmm. You didn't hmm. say nothing about raising your hand and say, I, I'm, a, I'm a psychology major, but I have taken the classes to be qualified to graduate. Hmm. And he won that, that war, but mm -hmm. he had the credits to be a psychologist. And he, and he, he told me why he chose the, all of the classes he took, he took them strategically. Mm. Public speaking, all of the things that he took, the business classes he took, he took all of them for a purpose. And that's that, what separated him from most people that just walk through the doors and just you know, play cards all day long and whatnot. Jim didn't have time to play no cards, even though he know how to play cards. But he, <laughs> he said, I'm going to play more chess than I play cards. Here's now, me. this gives us so much insight as into why he left the game of football after nine years of dominance. Because, mm. you know, people are always saying, dang, why did he leave? I mean, you know, that was a good situation. But when you break down the classes he chose, and the, and what he was really working on, you now start while to see playing. while he was playing. You now start to see like there was a yeah. method to the master. Now, I'm not gonna always be a football player. I got some bigger things to do. Because while I'm playing football, I'm preparing for the other things that I'm passionate about doing. Mm. The Negro Economic Improvement Union, which was the NEIU, mm -hmm. that became the Black Economic Union, employed over 600. Not employed but uh, uh, funded over 600 black businesses mm. while he was playing, while he was playing. And in his spare time, he brought the fellas together. <laughs> Show Come that on. iconic picture if you got it. At, at Sarah, your, do at you have lunch. that iconic picture? I will totally look for it. I'll be right back. You know, yeah. And brought it's the, the Cleveland fellas. Summit. The Cleveland 1967, Summit. 1967, June 4th. Mm, mm, mm. And that during the time of Gemini. You see, and the thing that was so critical about that was he knew they'd already started making the moves that they were making in terms of bringing the, the economic pieces together, mm. but he also understood the importance of a visual congregation. Mm -hmm. Brothers, so did Mayor Stokes, the first black mayor of Cleveland, mm -hmm. uh, a couple other business people, and a lot of the cats that, that were outside of the team and that he competed with, mm -hmm. and the other sports, mm -hmm. and they all rallied around who? the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. Okay, and they did it in such a way that the magnitude of the photograph and the significance Bam. of it, because that's Clarence Stokes, the guy next to him. Bill Russell, Kareem. Uh, and that's Dr. Walter Beach who played with him. He had two teammates on there, uh, Gene Wooden, who became uh, the, 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 uh, the chairman of another organization that Jim had. Uh, that's Gene Wooden to the far right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Dr. Beach is standing next to him. The thing that was so important, uh, then you had, uh, uh, of course, Bill Russell, Ali, and the young, uh, at the time, Lou Alcindor. Lou Alcindor. Okay. Now, what's so interesting about that is, as they sat in that room, and the difference between what happened with this assembly of, of, of brothers around something serious and what Colin Kaepernick did, all we got out of that was symbolic gest gestures. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? The, mm -hmm. the second... Uh, so You're called, talking about when he when he took the knee. Took the knee. Mm -hmm. And then closed his mouth when they gave him that bag of money. And mm -hmm. he heard from him since. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then he had the nerve to try to come back and play football. Well, that's all well and good, brother, and power to you. You got your money, man. 
But what you didn't understand because you didn't take the time to look back at the significance of certain things that have happened in our culture. Mm -hmm. All right, because long before, uh, long uh, between those gaps, Jim has had a history of stepping up for cats. I remember there was a running back named Dwayne Thomas who played for the, the, the last championship team the Dallas Cowboys had. Mm -hmm. And they maligned him because they didn't understand that this cat had been through a lot of trauma in his, in his youth, and that's the reason he was so aloof. Mm -hmm. But the one thing he did was he produced on that football field, but they kept pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. And Jim came out one day and spoke out on his behalf, and the media came down to him, man, what are you doing, man? You, you messing with these people's team. He said, yeah, you talking about a team, I'm talking about an individual, a young man that I, I talked to, because Jim has always had a habit of doing that. The same as Jerry. Mm -hmm. They counsel people, a lot of people don't realize LeBron's breakthrough came from his uh, conversation with, with Jerry West. All right, but back to Jim and how he's been an advocate for his people while he's working out his own issues of being fatherless. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's always been sensitive to fatherless people and, and, and helping them deal with the, the damage of feeling that you did something wrong mm -hmm. by coming into the world, you know what I mean? And man, uh, trying Bobby, to figure this stuff out. <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> let me tell you, man. Because Bobby don't prepare you to meet the greats. He just bring them around you, <laughs> you mm, know? Mm. Bobby took my son to meet Jim Brown. This is when New was at Auburn. Oh, and my bad, man. Bobby, it's, it's fine, Bobby. Hey, Big Rock. You, you know, you I'm listening. I'm on the whole podcast. So much more to show. We hey, live hey, on the air right say now. Hello to Big Roy Foster, man. <laughs> Big Roy hey, Foster, I, I, we on we live on the radio USC. right now. USC, yeah. <laughs> Black Trojan. Hey, I'll get back to you after the show is over. So, right. <laughs> Bobby took us over there, <laughs> and I'm accustomed to speaking for New at that time, because he was still young, trying to get his, you know, get his bearings or whatever. You know, so I was talking to Jim and telling Jim, uh, you know, yeah, he's a freshman. He's at Auburn and, and you know, uh, Bruce Pearl. And, you know, he played at Santa Monica. And in the most stern but respectful way, Jim was like, thank you, thank you. Uh, but I, I would like to hear from the boy. <laughs> 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 it, it was it was respectful uh, right. and stern yeah. and it let me know like he wanted to get into the mind of the boy to see what you know where his focus is at this particular stage and it was such a profound moment i just mm. said i'm gonna sit over here by these dogs you was left no choice <laughs> <laughs> And that's the thing that was so amazing about mm -hmm. how he dealt with people. Yeah. He would let you know very quickly, anything I can do to help, I will, under the following conditions. Accept the terms right. of our relationship. I'm a benevolent dictator. Oh, yeah. It was very respectful, no, though. No, he, he would let you know I'm a benevolent <laughs> dictator. Because... <laughs> He was the opposite of Jerry. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> you was talking to me. Right. And and he said, Bobby, uh, let me talk to Zoe. <laughs> right. <laughs> so exactly it was the opposite experience exactly. yeah. between Jerry exactly. and Jim. Exactly. But Bobby, none of those things could have happened if you didn't see promise in my boy and bring those people to the forefront. What else are we supposed to do? That but Bobby. A lot of people don't understand. Okay, let's, why. Leave, let's leave a lot. A lot of what then uh, cost me treasure and and and, 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 and sleepless time nights. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people, man. Because a lot of people want you to be the brunt mm. of the push. Mm. But then once you get to the top of the hill, they want to ride down the hill with you. Mm. And it's like, okay, Bobby. Now that I have figured that out. It's a lot easier for me to, to do, because math is still the weakest of my subject, mm -hmm. but I've learned to do addition by subtraction. You better speak. <laughs> you see what I mean? And I do that without the malice that I used to have because I had to rid myself of that too. You see what I mean? Because at the end of the day, Jim said, always look in the mirror 
before you start uh, assessing blame for whatever has went wrong in your life to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because you had to acquiesce the power to them to do that. Mm -hmm. And the, f the faster you figure that out, the further along you can, the further you'll go, mm -hmm. and the faster you'll go. Mm -hmm. And you'll know then how to form the kind of relationships that are easy to qualify. So every time I got around Jim, it, it was a, a, a lesson of some sort. Mm -hmm. And um, I was talking to uh, Julian Mendoza, uh, the brother that made it possible for us to grow exponentially throughout the, the correctional facilities, uh, and, and an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. You know, last night, man, because he called me when he heard about Of course, man, I've been getting calls around the clock the last I know. 72 hours. And now the calls that matter are the ones that come in now. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. After I done started sifting and sorting. Yeah. You see what I mean? What do you want? Uh, well, you know, I, w I was wondering if you uh, could do this, that, and the third. And I'm like, well, uh, right now I want to know why should I do this, that, and the third. Come on, why? You see what I mean? Why is a you big know, one. Because see, the why gets us to the how. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so I said that to say this, man. Julian was put in situations from day one. When I first met him, it was a room where he was the only non-black. And I'm talking about all the killers mm. in Jim's house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, whoa, man, what the hell? And I got myself into here because he went in, in his bedroom, right? Because people don't know Bobby was there when all the gangbangers was at Jim's house. And Talk to us, Bobby. Truce, all of that. The truce. gang truce, yeah. all of yeah. it. And so he went in the, in, the, in, in, in the bedroom and said, I'll be out in a few minutes. And I looked around the room and there's Rockhead, Big U, uh, Keto Rock, all, everybody got these, these these wild ass names and shit. T. Rogers, you know, all of the right. guys that became a uh, 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 Twilight Bay, who uh, I spoke to yesterday, and uh, he's he's in uh, Gambia right now, doing great work, man. But mm. and he also has a home in London. You see mm. what I mean? So when Jim spawned these cats, the ones that beat the the enormous attrition rate, right which is a subject matter in and of itself. Jim told me many times, I said, Jim, I'd gotten to know some of the cats by then. Mm -hmm. One foot in, one foot out. One mm -hmm. foot in, one foot out. Mm -hmm. And Jim said, I, I know it's a lot of these cats ain't gonna make it by now. Mm. And it's gonna cost me a fortune. Cause Jim, out of his pocket, and this is a conservative estimate, uh, over the 20 some years that, 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 that I was engaged in the American program with him, he spent personally out of his own pocket at least $5 million. I believe it. At least. I believe it. And got criticized from all angles. The people that, 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 that knew he could have made a whole lot of more money and they could have made money with him. Right. They kept, you know, saying, man, what are you doing, man? Why are you so committed to this, 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 this cause, man? What are you doing, man? And, and Jim said, I don't have to explain that to you. It's not for you. Mm. You know, you can be a Bill Belichick and help with that, or you can be someone that I'll just have a very limited relationship because this is something I'm devoting my time and treasure to. Mm. And uh, there we are. And so I use that as a, as a, as a, a, a setback because, I mean, a, 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 a segue. A, a segue into why Julian was so important. The brown population that began to take over the, the, the correctional facilities uh, in California, and now they dominate them damn near everywhere because they're, they're spread around. You know, the, the, the brown population has exceeded the black population, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what happened was uh, they met through James Almos, the actor. And, and at the time, James Almos had started production on the movie American Me. Mm -hmm. And in order to do the movie, he had to get the permission of the Mexican Mafia. Mm. And the two principals of the Mexican Mafia were the uncles of Julian Mendoza. Mm. And James almost had a, a wonderful respect and relationship with Jim. And Jim told him, you know, look, man, uh, I can't get nothing done in, in, in some of these facilities, man, uh, without the permission of these folks, man. And so... He he uh he said, look, uh, I'm doing this movie right now, and there's a young man uh, on the set that I, I want you to meet. And so he arranged for Julian and Jim to meet, and it changed the arc of the organization mm. because we would not have been able to 
execute contracts that we had mm. without the permission of those folks. Of them folks. And then it got even deeper than that because when the movie came out, almost didn't have control over the final cut. Mm. And there were scenes in the movie that suggested uh, homosexuality as it is uh, in the form of a man getting raped is still a homosexual act to some folks. Right. Okay. And so what happened was, since that 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 was in the film and it made the macho men in 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 in, 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 in that culture furious to the point that they put a million dollar contract out on James Almost. Oh wow! And they said we will forego killing you if you pay this tax. He paid the million dollar tax and they were still gonna kill him. Julian went back to his uncles and saved James almost his life. And in exchange, that's the favor James almost did for America. See, y'all don't get this insight. Y'all don't get this. Bobby was there, man. Bobby, how do people follow you? How do they support you? How do they just pour well, I'm into on what a, you're doing? Because I know you got a podcast. You yeah. got you got a lot of stuff. You got uh, uh, the stuff with Doctor Russell. Put that, put that put that cash app back up there. That's the, you know sometimes you can just pu- you can just push a button <laughs> hey. and, uh, and 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 make a difference. You know that that dollar sign real BGS. You know uh, and follow wait, me. Wait, dollar sign real BGS. You better stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that real dollar oh. sign real. BGS, y'all better set yeah. it up for my brother, man. And see, the thing about that is this: uh, any any help that I get, I, I, and I had to finally accept the fact, man. I, I, I'm a sucker for love, you know what I mean? And I love my people, yeah, uh, enough that anything they do to help me, man, it goes right back in the pot. Yeah, all right. And the things that we're doing right now, it does take resources to do it because we're going to be pushing these issues that I mentioned uh, so far across the country so i don't care where you live if y'all stay in touch man we're gonna help folks in those communities because it helps all of us because i get tired of walking out of the door man and being afraid of everything you live to get robbed going to your car coming from your car going to the store i mean walking in your house very dangerous <laughs> yeah now, man, yeah because people poverty is a serial killer man it turns people that otherwise would not try to eat off of you They'll try to they'll try to eat off of you, mm. even though they better off trying to you know. Like the guy said, uh, "Why'd you rob the bank?" He said, "Cause that's where the money is." Well, it's it's other ways to rob the bank. It's other ways to create wealth, mm-hmm. and we can do that with a, a more sophisticated exchange of information. All right, so people can get it, get to me on uh, Instagram at Uncle Bobby's Country Corner. Uh, my Facebook page is my name, Bobby Glanton Smith. I'm in the process of trying to get back my 10,000 Twitter followers now that uh, uh, Elon Musk yeah, d- 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 <laughs> reopened the gate there after my account had been hacked, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, but primarily for right now, my Facebook page, Bobby Glanton Smith, Uncle Bobby's Country Corner. And um, we're going to continue to do the things that make a difference in the lives of people that deserve an opportunity to live with a, a greater measure of comfort and security. Bobby, what about um, your podcast? Because you've okay, been working what's on it. Here's yeah. what, what, what happened with, with, with Counterpunch. Um, we had some glitches when we, when we first recorded it. Mm-hmm. All right. And we're still, you know, getting the, the final format of that back together man because okay. we, we had five incredible hours of, of material and uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that because Sam Watson uh, continues to be a gentleman uh, that's that's my guy that's you another know, dude you introduced yeah. me to yeah yeah and so <laughs> Sam um, is cold man when I saw him in that cigar yeah. lounge he was like that's you <laughs> oh that you bobby people yeah, <laughs> he was yeah. turned up and see and he always asked me about jim man you know man, how yeah. jim doing how jim doing how jim doing because they 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 they, they, they cross paths mm-hmm. in that world mm-hmm. you know because mm-hmm. mike tyson and all of these people that yeah. i've had a chance to be around is because of uh of jim yeah and sam you know what i mean yeah, uh, they had a great fight the other night. Uh, we got to talk about it right yeah. now, okay. Bobby. Who won? Uh, 
Let's I, be honest. Let's be box, objective. Boxing won. Boxing won in the following way. The, the thing that people are, are trying to decide is which fighter won. Yes. But the sport won because for one reason, they fought. Right. That was a fight. Right. And a very close fight. And depends on who you like and what you like. Because my man got the belts. He had four. He Haney. Had the only, uh, yeah. Yeah. Haney had all four belts. Okay. And uh, Undisputed. Uh, absolutely. Uh -huh. So for once in, in, the re in recent history, that, that, that meant something the like, other night. Right. Because what they needed to win more decisively than that? Uh, Lomachenko. Lomachenko. Yeah. If you're going to win, win yeah, you got to beat the champ. Beat, blood in, beat him to half to death, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because oh, that's the old school thought right, process. Right. If you going to beat the champ, right. you got to beat gotta, the gotta, champ. You got to beat him. You got to whoop his ass. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that leads to another very important segue. I, I was talking to uh, George Foreman's uh, guy that I uh, we did the American program down in Louisiana with at the, at the time the deadliest prison in the United States, Angola State Penitentiary, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, it's because of George and and and, um, and Jim Brown's relationship. Uh, they grew close without Jim ever knowing how much George Foreman admired him mm -hmm. uh, coming out of the 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 the. the the the, the, bot, the belly of the beast in Houston, Texas, sick war. Hey. Right. You know, and um, <laughs> what happened was when they fought the, the um, in in uh, in Zaire. Was mm -hmm. it Zaire? Where did they fight at? In Zaire. Okay, when they fought in Zaire. Uh, the rumble in the jungle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, they had a delay because Jim, uh, uh, what's his name, hurt his hand, mm -hmm. broke his hand. And uh, they had to delay the fight. And Jim would tell me these stories when he came back, how uh, he would go in uh, George Foreman's uh, camp. Because he's still a young brother, and, he, and, and George told him when he met him, he said, man, I've been, I've been wanting to meet you a long time, man. Mm. He said, uh, I was a wayward kid, and you did a commercial for the Job Corps. And I joined the Job Corps. Wow. And it, it gets even more personal. A friend of mine, Slim Jr., who you met at some point, I'm sure, good friend of mine here in L.A. who passed away a couple of years ago, got it. he was in the job call with George Foreman. Mm. And they became very close friends back mm. then. Long story short, they in, in Africa. And, and he shared that story with Jim. Mm. And he said, man, and uh, Jim would come by every day to his camp and whatnot. And it was all kind of folks in there, you know, big entourage of folks. Mm. And uh, the night of the fight, after George lost to Ali, Jim went by to check on him. And, and unlike the other time where he had to push to get in, in, in the vicinity of George. He can get right to him. George, <laughs> his trainer, and that German shepherd. <laughs> that was <laughs> it, man. And it got crazy because... Uh, he was forlorn, of course, because he lost. But Jim was like, "Man, you, you, you big, you powerful. You'll be back, bro. Ali's on the other side of this thing, man. Right. You know, age wise." And he said, "That ain't my only problem, man. Um, this lady is extorting me, man. Uh, uh, and she told me if I if I don't pay her, she's gonna go to the press and tell them that I raped her, which he didn't do. Mm. All right." And he said, well, uh, what's the push, you know? And and he said, uh, she wants $5,000. <clears> and in 74, that was a pretty nice little piece of change. Mm -hmm. And um, Jim said, well, where's she staying at? He gave her the, the information where the woman was at. Jim went over and uh, said, look at here. Um, here's this $5,000, and we're done with this, okay? We're done with this, all right? Call me from the airport. Cause it's time for you to go. He right. said, "Call me from the airport." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and so he went back and told George. He said, "Look, man, uh, I took care of that." And he said, "Well, what did you do?" He said, "I gave the woman what she asked for. I gave her that five G and instructions to you know how to tell it on out the country." And and and, and George was just in shock. You know, <laughs> that was weighing on him, but he didn't. He didn't. He didn't tell Jim until that moment why it was weighing on him so much. He hadn't got his money from Don King. Wow! And he told him, he said, "Man, uh, I, I'd pay you right now on the spot, man, but I ain't got my money from Don." And he didn't get his money until he got back in the states. All right. And so he told him, he said, "Man, as soon as I get back to the states, man, uh, I'm gonna take care of you." So what he did was. Uh, he got back to L.A., 
but he couldn't stay. He had to get back to take care of some other affairs he had to take care of. Mm -hmm. And um, he gave uh, Jim the instructions to go to the concierge at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'd be a package there for him. And Jim said when he got there, he opened up the envelope, it was 50,000 cash. Not the five that he, 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 he sold into the brother, but 50K cash. <laughs> and that started a love affair they had. He talked to, uh, uh, I'll talk to Richard Johnson, uh, shout out to Richard and George in Houston, Texas, uh, yesterday. And, and he said that about two weeks before George, uh, before Jim passed, they called him, man, just out of instinct, because mm -hmm. they hadn't spoken in a, in a, in a, in a while. Mm -hmm. And they exchanged their, 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 their final salutations and greetings, and, and you know, he passed away uh, Friday, uh, Thursday night. Mm -hmm. With that being said, the work that we were able to do at Angola Prison mm -hmm. was profoundly important to the organization on a number of different levels, mm -hmm. okay? Because George underwrote it, and, and, and what's the name taught the curriculum? Richard did at mm -hmm. Angola. Mm -hmm. All right. And it, it transformed, transformed the, the, the prison. The prison. Well, yeah. we heard about that. Yeah. that yeah. Like the whole prison yeah. changed, yeah. Yeah. shifted yeah. Yeah. because yeah. of the philosophy. Absolutely. So <laughs> I said all that to say there's so many different layers to this in terms of what we can extract is what's important now. How right. can we take the things that we have successfully done? Mm. and multiply those. And then it's not a question of somebody living and dying in vain, right. you know, which we hear from time to time. See that? And, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, wow. It, Don I've, never, King. I've never seen that picture. Where'd you get that picture? <laughs> on, on the internet. Jim Brown <laughs> wow. and George Foreman. Yeah, and you, see and, what, you uh, see how Don look at Don like, uh, George ain't going to be too happy after, after this fight. <laughs> 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 oh, oh man. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, man. It's interesting that look Don got on you. He got that look on his face like, boy, this ain't gonna go well <laughs> down the road. Lloyd Hinton, your granddaughter shared my account. Okay. Thank you, Lloyd. We mm. appreciate you, good brother. Mm, mm, mm. Bobby, so, man, yeah. hey, man, I want everybody to follow you, man. I want everybody that's in here right now. We got about 600 people in here. I want everybody that's in here to follow Bobby Glanton Smith. Bobby has been the same since I've known him. He ain't changed. Mm. He's been a solid brother the whole time, man. He's been working with people. He's been connecting the dots. He's been telling y'all about Wendell Stimley. He's been telling y'all about this for mm. the longest, man. Yeah, the benefit from knowing him now, man, because um, I was uh, talking to some young people um, earlier and the one thing that we got to do is be able to offer a young person another way solutions and options because if you can't do that they can have the want to but if they don't get the how to they're going to stick with business as usual and that's bad news for us man man that's real bad news because the incentive to rob black people by black people is extremely high because who cares if a black person robs a black person, who cares? <laughs> Man, it just it, Bobby, it just it, it it blows my mind because when you look at someone like Jim Brown, someone like yourself, he created a curriculum on how to combat. Listen, to what I'm about to say: how to combat gang violence, the gang culture. Hip hop created a, uh, or New York created a curriculum too. It was called hip hop, because they used hip hop to to combat gang violence. So then I start to ask myself, are these curriculums outdated? Because pull up that picture, Sarah. Which one? Or the prom picture. Oh Lord. Look at that, Bobby. That's a, that's an eighteen year old girl. Is that a girl or a guy with her? That's a guy, I think. That's the guy and the girl. Okay. Because See, because it's, it's prom. Be you can't tell the difference. It's now. prom time. <laughs> it's prom season. Well, who? I, and I would never let my yeah. daughter go to prom like if that. she did, she took all her shit with her. <laughs> she would have took, took everything. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. 
when hip hop started, oh, that was a curriculum oh, to combat gang violence. Mm -hmm. Then you get Imera Khan on this side, mm -hmm. on the West Coast with, with Jim Brown. Do you understand? And it seems like we still want this kind of existence. No. Bobby, how do we uproot this? Because prom season is a big deal across the country, brother. They don't even need an excuse for a prom thing because you got all of these sites now that are competing for the same eye eyeball. And, and, it, and it goes further and further out. Somebody sent me a, a, a clip this morning where these three uh, young ladies jumped on this brother, man, and, and whooped him like he was a runaway slave. What? And I'm trying to figure out, where, where's the honor in that? I mean, <laughs> clearly, whatever instituted the fight, they didn't have to show that. But what they did was somebody, you know, because everybody's filming everything now. Mm -hmm. And you can go on the Internet and just type in somebody getting beat up. And you'll be there the rest of the night. You'll, be, folks you'll see 500 right. videos, somebody <laughs> getting you, beat man. up. Yeah, you know, it's crazy, man, that we we don't understand the absence of sensitivity brings out the worst of humanity, man. And, oh. and every time, listen, man, the absence of sensitivity brings out the worst in humanity. In other words, we lack empathy for each other. We lack empathy for ourselves. And the only thing I've known Bobby to do is try to connect people. Well, Bobby said, Let me, I'm going to connect you with my roots, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> my guy, <God>, man. <laughs> right? It, it's more than the roots, man. It's the, it's the, it's the quality of the person, man. Yeah. The thing about uh, Dr. Russell that I love the most is he's straight no chaser. Straight no and chaser. And just like all of us, he's evolving, man, because I can remember on some occasions I would tell him about people that I, I know that he could help, and I've seen him die. Mm. And over that period of time, I've seen him be a little more caring. Yeah, because he he see, Russell is right, 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 right. And, and I do what I tell you now. I told you, <laughs> listen here now. You take these, right? And then you take this, right, right. And he's gonna be all right. That shit gonna be up after now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, I've learned to, to understand why he's that way. Right. You see what I mean? Because he just wears it differently, but. It hurts when people don't follow through on what you what they know you can do and, and, and they leave you hanging or whatever. And he, he's been better at, at that than I have. Right. But it, it's not to say that he's not affected by it. Right. He just managed it better. And, I, and I've grown more like him in that way. See, if you, if, you, if you get your circle right, you can extrapolate the pieces that make you a better overall person. What, what can we do to help someone like like John Morant. That is a, 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 a an interesting segue because as we talk right now, I got my people in Memphis uh, searching for the right person to talk to to let him understand that there's help for him. And, and it's all in the same circle. Mm. The, 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 the curriculum is a piece of that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be him going through the American curriculum as much as it is him understanding the tenets of being responsible for your life. You know what's so heavy? Bobby, what's so heavy is, man, you talking about from, from the outside looking in. Let me just tell you what you just said. It feels like that brother is addicted to the lifestyle of the streets. Can you, know, you become addicted to the excitement that the streets bring? You can become addicted to it. Because he don't have to be that. Yes, he does. Because it's an addiction. Mm. You heard the phrase, uh, when me. you're in a hole, first thing you got to do is stop digging. All right. Now, come on, Bobby. How can someone who was not raised in the streets end up addicted to the streets? It becomes a fashionable thing mm. to want to be liked Mm. And to want to be in the, 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 the what's now, the what's, the what's going on era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that changes every 30 days. Mm -hmm. And by the time, you know, you get whirled around and, and spun dried, everybody gone. You know that. Everybody gone. The money gone, too. You gone. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know and that. And so when you ask that very provocative and necessary question, I answered it the way that I did. He's addicted for the wrong reasons. Because a lot of people that are addicted to the streets 
they ain't got no choice. Mm. He got choices. He had choices. He wasn't born hand to mouth. Right. Okay. The streets is hand to mouth. Mm-hmm. And by the time you either survive that or become part of the prison industrial complex, that's your fate. Mm-hmm. So you can't, people need to understand, the options that he has are far greater than someone that has embraced the streets because that's all that they have. It, it, and that's what we really need to have a breakthrough on, is to get away from uh, sensationalizing insanity. And that's what we have done as a people. You know, mm. we have gotten so caught up in wanting to make it seem like it's okay to be disrespectful, it's okay not to want to work in order to have the things in life that mm-hmm. are possible to obtain mm-hmm. through meaningful employment or entrepreneurism or creating your own new paradigm. Uh, there's a brother that I've also spoken to <coughs> uh, intimately the last few days because we're going to add some of the things that he has done to the equation. And he knew Jim uh, longer than I had. Mm-hmm. <coughs> his name is Glenn Harvey. Mm-hmm. Uh, his brother is Paul, uh, his cousin is Paul Hudson. His, his, his uh, grandfather is the renowned architect who did LAX, uh, Paul Williams. Mm-hmm. And he has uh, worked in, in, in the banking industry for many years as a boss on mm-hmm. Wall Street, all of that. And a real, real smart brother. And it took a minute for me to get him and, and, and Wendell in the same conversation. But because, you did it because yeah, you know yeah, how to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the reason that's that's a blessing to the folks that are listening to this show right now, artificial intelligence, just saying it gives me a headache. You see what I mean? Bobby. It, 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 shadow banning and all of that kind of stuff has really got us where we don't know who you're talking to and the people you want to talk to can't get to you. That's why you got 600, you got 70 some thousand subscribers, man. Yeah. And I guarantee you 69,000 of them don't even know you're on the app. Right now. <laughs> That's what I'm right saying. now. Have no idea. <laughs> the algorithm, boy, is something else, man. It's something else. Man. But, uh, Glenn is doing some exciting things. I got him and Wendell on the phone yesterday, and we had a breakthrough because powerful people tend to wonder. Uh, sometimes they can be very, you know, small-minded. They say with terms, can't nobody be as bad as I am. <laughs> <laughs> but Wendell knew his language, and he knew Wendell's language because both of them are, are, are some very multidimensional geniuses, man. Mm-hmm. So we, we just got to continue to merge the talent in a, in a healthy way and a loving way and a way that creates that, that bridge between generations because it, it's not going to matter if I, I get a, a another a significant uh, financial rush, I had a couple of, you know hits in my life. Mm-hmm. But what good is it going to be if there's not a, a, a secession? What good is it going to be? And Bobby is talking about unity. He's talking about cooperation and collaboration. Mm-hmm. And while all of that's going on, meaning we we don't really coalesce with each other the way we should if we're going to be successful. While that's happening. There's an advisory that was issued by the NAACP, uh, a travel advisory warning Florida's uh, warn, warns Florida. They said it's openly hostile towards African Americans. So it's basically warning African Americans not to travel to Florida because they're saying Florida is openly hostile to African Americans, and that's a lot has a lot to do with DeSantis, I the think governor. That, I think that that's. Uh counterproductive. That's Talk to me, Bobby. What are your thoughts? Well, just our home state. Tennessee. What just happened down there recently? What happened, Bobby? All the murders in, at, at oh, them yeah. schools and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Come on, man. You can't say one state is so much worse than the other with, uh, 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 where you we are You said if right you're going to put an advisory, travel advisory nationwide. on Florida, you better do it on Tennessee. <laughs> man, you need to do it nationwide, Do it on Tennessee, man. too. <laughs> we done had more mass shootings in the first five months of this year than ever in mm. one cal- you know, in, in, in one uh, uh, calendar year, man. Mm. So that's, that's just misleading, man. People are hurting in this country right now, man. They're hurting. So what he's doing... 
is, and again, I got, I, I got, I, I'm always going to question the motivation of someone that's got uh, something like that going on because the media. I always question. Now, I ain't the talking media. about the media. I'm talking about that brother right there on the camera, and I tell you what. No, that's not DeSantis. <laughs> DeSantis. No, that's the brother. That's, yeah. the, that's the brother that put that warning out there. The NAACP. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and see, uh, our leadership or the lack thereof has us in a situation where we're in the shape we're in right now. Because that, that's not well thought out mm -hmm. unless you got an ulterior motive. So I guarantee you, when did he put that out? When did it come out? This, this news uh, article is Monday the 22nd, 2023. That's today. That's today. All right. So what he, here's what's going to likely happen. He's going to get a call from the Convention and Visitors Bureau in the state of Florida. Say, come on by here and get this bag, nigga, and shut the fuck up. <laughs> come on down here and pick and up he this. He's going to go get that money, and he's going to come out and say, well, you know, we, 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 what we really need to do is everybody come in and sing kumbaya. You know what I mean? Let's he work gonna, together. He's he going to de-escalate that shit right. that way. And then when you look at what happens with the Al Sharpton's of the world, and I have no problem, because I done been around Al, and Al know how I feel about him, and uh, Jesse <laughs> too, you know? It, see, at some point, without being confrontational, mm -hmm. we've got to make people accountable. Yeah. Because they way ain't working. Right. Not for us. It's right. working for them, but it's not working for us. A matter of fact, it comes at great consequence for us. So anybody that invested in Black Lives Matter, yeah, you need to ask for your money back. Exactly. You need to ask for your money back because certain individuals went on a spree. Mm -hmm. Went on a spree. And they corrupted deals like right here in Los Angeles. The, what's name is still in play right now because they, they wasted time entertaining an offer from Black Lives Matter, the uh, Crenshaw uh, uh, Mall. The Crenshaw Mall. Oh, yeah. That's been over a year ago. Mm. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And the people who put some money into that, they stuck now because the major tenants, Walmart and Seals, pulled out. And speaking of Walmart, you know, they being sued because they have something called peasant insurance. Pull that up, what? Sarah. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. They pull that up. I'm trying to find Walmart is being sued, Bobby. I'm listening to you trying to figure out <laughs> what is peasant insurance, man. Okay. They hire people that may have, allegedly, that may have pre, uh, predisposed sicknesses and illnesses, and they take out insurance policies on them, on the employees. And what's happening, it's, it's, in, our, it's in our script. Pull it up. It's, it, it, it wasn't in there. <laughs> not, well, a, not a picture. Not a, well, why are you not pulling article? it up? I'm, I, I'm going to read it to you right now, Bobby. I'm going to read it to you right now. Sound like a good business model for them. A quarter to Reuters. According to Reuters, employees' widow can sue Walmart for life insurance benefits. The reason why is because Walmart took out the life insurance policy on, you know, her mm -hmm. significant other, her spouse. Mm -hmm. A federal appeals court on Tuesdays revive on Tuesday revived uh, much of a lawsuit by Walmart's greeters window who blamed. Uh, the mega retailer for the cancellation of her husband's life insurance policy and for overcharging him for disability insurance premiums. So they well, got they cancel crazy. the policy. What they got now, they it, it, and, and it's crazy. Somebody sent it to me today. It's called a peasant, <laughs> a peasant. <laughs> I can't even say it. You just did. You just infinity. You got stuck right there. Because <laughs> it, it, it blows my mind, man. Ooh -wee. Mm. Peasant insurance. What is a dead peasant insurance? That's what it's called. What is dead peasant insurance? Mm -hmm. Most people who purchase life insurance policies do so to, to financially support loved ones oh. after their death. Most policies fit into this category, but there is another type of policy called corporate owned life insurance or dead peasant insurance mm. that exists to protect a company's financial interest in the event of the death of a highly valued employee, such as a former CEO. So what what is now being pushed is that they're putting it on low level employees. And collecting insurance where the the pet the family don't get nothing but the company does. Wow. I, I don't see how they could take all of the money if 
they've already had the benefit of using that to offset the loss of life in that case. I am I am absolutely sure that somebody, some sneaky ass lawyer said, you do know you're in a relationship with your employee, so you might as well take out insurance on them. Mm. And if something was to happen to them, yeah. you get the benefit and not the people who they really in relationship. Well, I'm sure and, some and, slick ass lawyer made you, the connection. You're, you're clearly right, and, and now they're gonna, they gonna wage a battle over it, but meanwhile, they done already cashed the checks. <laughs> exactly. You see, yeah, and and uh, and those kind of battles, consumers never win, man, because those things drag on. They they still trying to uh, sort out the Exxon Valdez. Uh, <laughs> I oh mean, God, God. from the nineties. Yeah, man. <laughs> man, and Bobby, this is why I think <clears throat> Jim Brown, his legacy, uh, and today us trying to grab someone like. John Morant is so important because when you read these stories, like you said, yo, did, did you hear about what happened in Tennessee? Mm. No, what happened? Mm. Oh, all them black people got killed and shot up. You know, mm -hmm. it should be an advisory warning in every state. That's what Bobby Absolutely. said, right? Yeah. Well, look at this, Bobby. IRS admits black taxpayers are more likely to get audited. How does this tie into John ja Morant? John ja Morant, you in a position to make different choices, young brother. Mm. Whereas the rest of us are subject to, like you said, Bobby, as soon as you get to your car, something might happen to you. Mm -hmm. Or you understand what I'm saying? You shouldn't glorify this lifestyle mm. when, in fact, you're in a different space where you don't even have to come down to this level and deal with, like you said, the instant repercussions of being out here on the street. Talk to it, Bobby. Well, see... Um as we, we sit here right now, there's a phenom somewhere, 10, 11 years old, that's already being inoculated with the fallacy that he is something special. Ooh, we. You're a great athlete, but if you are not being prepped and primed for a very, uh, you know, greedy world, mm. it's going to be the same thing that the, the Jai is going through right now because he's got a right at this stage of his life to feel like this is too much right. because I'm creating all of the money but I'm not enjoying this because it's, it has put upon me responsibilities that I didn't really sign up for. But let me say this. Do you agree with J.J. Reddick's take? What? J.J. Reddick's take on Ja Morant was this is a 23-year-old kid. You guys are holding him to a standard that's unfair to him because when you look at all these other people, white people, having guns on social media, nobody bats an eye. Nobody really yeah, says anything. Y'all yeah. remember what J uh, J.J. Reddick said? Yeah, yeah. I loved it. Well, J he, he's J.J. Reddick is right, and I want everybody to consider this. J.J. Reddick ain't got to worry about that problem. Yeah. And to some degree, white people don't have to worry about that kind of problem. Mm -hmm. But it's different for us because we have saved the film industry several times over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. The black exploitation films come to mind right away. The industry was in the toilet, okay, when they realized, damn, we got this market of folks. All we got to do is put some, put some of their faces out there. The content ain't even got to be that good. No. Right. They're going to go and see it three times this week. Yes, Tyler Perry. You know? And so where I'm going with that is this. Within what, con what people consider uh, the, the, the consensus or the norm mm -hmm. are subsets that are very impactful. We drive certain narratives but most of them are negative and counterproductive to our salvation and our survival and our prosperity. But see, that goes back to the Ja Morant piece. A lot of black people jumped on Ja Morant basically saying, yo, you, you ruining your opportunity. And this is how, I mean, of course, I mean, we, we're descendants of slaves. So of course we're going to be like, once you got a good situation, you better protect it. And what I'm trying to explain on the Ja Morant side of it is this the system chose you brother 
So you got to move differently. You can't move the way you move in the streets. Mm. You got to move differently. It's almost like code switching, mm. right? Now, J.J. Reddick makes a strong point when he's basically saying America got a gun problem. Yes. But you want to point out this kid, this young guy who's pulling out a gun, but you don't do the same thing when politicians take family pictures with guns. Absolutely. You don't do the same thing. But but this is the thing that John needs to understand when we say move differently. Boy, your culture is under attack. So if your culture is hood, please understand your hood culture is under attack. A politician can sit with his family on Christmas Eve and everybody got a gun, baby too. And they say, oh, what a wonderful family picture. But your culture makes it seem like, oh, these dudes is dangerous. These motherfuckers is crazy. So when you do that and you're aligned with one of their corporate giants, which is the NBA, now you're out of alignment. That's why they, everybody's saying, you're going you gonna to mess up that money. That's $240 million they done gave you. You got you to gotta move differently. But white folk ain't got to move no kind of way. Go ahead, Bobby, and then, and yeah. then Sarah. See, two, it's two elements to this. One is just because you can don't mean that you should. Mm. And where I'm going with that is constitutionally. You got a right to bear arms. Within those same rights, the people that gave you that $240 million got a right to ask for it back if Ooh. you're doing things detrimental to the brand. To the brand, the business. So you can make these choices just do so consciously. Don't do it all willy-nilly thinking it ain't no big deal because nobody emphasized that to you until now that you done violated the code of the company. Right. There's a code out here in the streets, and then there's these contracts that you done signed and the stipulations therein. And sometimes and so, those supersede every oh, other you. contract. Well, you can go ahead and exercise your rights. You, just, you ain't going to do it without money. Right. All right. So if you feel that strongly about it, job, then okay, fall on your sword. But at least admit that you don't know, you didn't know these things until you did those things. Right. And right. that's where I got a problem with it. It's like David Banner said a long time ago, and I appreciate you introducing me to that brother many years ago. Mm -hmm. He said, it's only two things that white people are worried about, the loss of life and the loss of money. Mm -hmm. And when you get to that bearing arms thing, mm -hmm. let's just go back to the Deacons of Defense, who Jim had an uh, intimate relationship. I got to know... Uh, 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 one of the, the key members through Jim uh, over the years, because he stayed at Jim's house when he got ran out of the Boogaloo, Louisiana. Uh, Slick Willie, not Slick Willie, but uh, uh, I can't think of his name right now. But it doesn't matter as much. Fairgrounds, huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, what happened though was uh, when the deacon sided with uh, Dr. King. Things change, you know. And people say, "Well, look, you know." The deacons uh, of defense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know. And uh, Charles Evers uh, called uh, 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 Bill Russell when when when, when Mega got killed, and he said, "Brother, we need somebody of your stature, man, to come and be with us." And uh, during this this, this 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 scary time that we're in, and Bill said that when he got to uh, the airport in Jackson, Mississippi, on the tarmac, because that's back before you know you went, you, know, you come off the plane right on into the building, right? Mm -hmm. So he said when when the plane landed, these two it was twelve brothers, fully armed, eight mm -hmm. K forty seven shotguns, the whole works, you know. Mm -hmm. A couple of them had hand grenades and stuff, and they formed a battalion. Mm -hmm. All right. And Bill walked off the plane, and he said, man, I ain't never uh, felt so safe. Now I know how bad pussy must feel, you oh. know. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, God damn. Oh. And I'm, now here, 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 here's a connection to the theme of the show. When, when Bill told that story with me sitting right there in Jim Brown house, Jim looked at him and said, man, you never told me that story? Because that was about the third time I had been around Bill, and it took him three times for him to start telling stories around me, mm -hmm. you know. And we sitting there, and Jim banged on the table and said, man, why didn't you ask me to go down there with you, man? You know how to went, man. You right. know how to went, man. <laughs> I mean, Jim was really visibly upset. 
And uh, Bill said, I'm going to be honest with you, man. <laughs> Save for them bear pussies. When, uh, <laughs> when, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when Charles Evans called me, I didn't know if I should go, mm. let alone put somebody else in harm's way. Right. And he was sincere about that, man. And Jim was still mad as, oh, man. Hot as fish grease. Oh, boy, he was <laughs> on one, man. Sarah, what are your thoughts? You had one? Yeah, I'm well, sorry, Sarah. I'm, I'm, I'm just rolling totally from one story to the other. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. Like, I just, I just think, like, in a, in a country where so many people, like, especially a lot of white people, they like, advocating for gun rights, the NRA, and everything like that, like like it said like even last week like the, the kids with the guns at the table that's totally fine, but when a white person have a gun they're a patriot. When a black person have one they're a thug. Mm. Well, can, a patriot or mentally disturbed. Yeah, mm. yeah, and it's always because like, it ain't a, you okay. don't see a lot of brothers and young black kids running up into these facilities shooting things up. You don't see a lot of that. It's, it's, well, it's increasing do? though. It, I'm not saying it's not increasing but dramatically. I, but every last school, every last mass shooter and stuff like that, they always displayed it online. They always were taking pictures with guns and doing all kind of stuff like that. It, granted, they're not, they don't play NBA basketball, but are you telling me that all NBA players should not have the right to bear arms? Or like they, they got a right to it? bear arms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just but not like, on TV. Yeah, it's yeah. not. But it was, <laughs> it's not <laughs> on TV. I understand it, but it's just a whole thing like gun culture Anyway, like, why is it so, like, ixnay and uh, on one front and on the other ones, it's totally fine. Well, it's the question is not, it is why, it's just that we don't like the answer. What's the answer, Bobby? The answer is your complexion. Mm. There it is. Then See, when you're white, you got a different set of, uh, 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 of, uh, of regulations that, that really mean something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because white lives do matter. Mm. And the laws reflect that. When white people lose their lives, there's all kind of investigations and all kind of stuff. Money and, oh, and their oh, lives. Yeah, oh, they yeah. boy, yeah. y'all white in trouble. Matter. They white coming. You see, when that black cop down in Louisiana uh, killed that white man, they arrested him within 24 hours. Yeah. Speed white folks expeditiously. Yeah, and then you got white folks um, kill, kill black people, and nobody goes to jail if they do it for 30 days. Or unless wow. there's some outrage and people... It still don't match up with no real serious time. You know, yeah. I mean, at the most, I think uh, a guy uh, in Minnesota got like 12 years or something. And uh, the lady that oops and shot that brother... Uh, oops and shot. Yeah, Is you know, she said she thought she was reading for a taser. Yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. And killed and that she brother. already out. Yeah. yeah out. Yeah, yeah. 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 And another cop... That he was involved. He back on the force. Got another <laughs> job somewhere else. Back, boy. These white people. Say, but why don't you why know? Don't you're take a, a, good a good cop. That was an accident. But why <laughs> we don't take a book from like white people when when the crack epidemic go. happened? Um, all the you know all this all the loss loss of lives, families destroyed, and everything. The opioid crisis from prescription drugs and different things like that. Some people, families have received millions and millions of dollars mm. from pharmaceutical companies and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't, we don't hit them where it hurts or whatever, or they'll just laugh our lawsuit out the, out the court. That's a great example, and and and, and that's why in, in in sports vernacular, we need to talk about the process. Mm -hmm. See, when you when you when you peel the layers back off about the the uh, the pharmaceutical industry and the the uh, opioid crisis. They still going one foot in, one foot out because heroin is heroin. Yeah. It comes from the same place, that poppy seed. Mm -hmm. They just call it different names, and then some of it is legal and some of it is illegal. But it's the same dope. Mm. And it does it's the blue same magic. Thing. <laughs> 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 it's blue <laughs> magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, know. we forgot to do this. We forgot to do this. Today is the 22nd, May 22nd. Do oh, you yeah. know the Situation Shift television show, my television show, airs today what on time? our TV? Our TV. What time does it start? Is it on now? Uh, I think it airs. Let me, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> that would help. I think it airs at midnight. Then 
to be a hundred percent. Wait a minute, midnight the twenty third. <laughs> I promise you, Bobby. Bobby, I promise you. Supposed to call me back and tell me when. <laughs> but it airs today. It airs today. So everybody should download that damn Our TV app. <laughs> Our Please TV. set some notifications on that mug because it airs today. And I need everybody. Everybody who watches the Zo What Show, pass it on. Pass it on. Let everybody know, man. The situation shift airs today. Mm. Let everybody know, yeah, man. It, so man. I'm bugging yeah. off. It, it, yeah. did, did, I'm trying to call Marcus right now and find out. Should I call Phil? Uh, call Marcus. I'll call Marcus right now. Let me call Marcus and see. Because we, we need to know, Marcus. People want to know what time. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I see misplaces, everyone. They know them blue glasses on. Look. Places, everyone. Places. <laughs> Y'all hear Marcus King number? You hear Marcus King number? What? He didn't change his phone again? He, I know he ain't changed his phone. This, this better not be. <laughs> Come on, Marcus. Stop playing. <laughs> Did you hit the right digit? Right Oh, it's going to voicemail. We finna see, goddamn it. We gonna track your ass down. <laughs> you getting called by everybody. It, Jeffrey Brown on the chat. It is our TV. Like, I was, I was, I was from Martin. You know how that is? That's how it is. <laughs> it's not our. The TV it's show not. airs today, though. So yep. everybody should download the Our TV. Not one hour, but our, <laughs> O-U-R, Our TV app. What did you call and it should say our TV seven or some seventy eight or something like that on there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Did you call Tony? I should call Tony. Let me call Phil. Algebra. Cause somebody know what time the damn show air. Somebody gotta know. I was trying to. But it does air oh, today. Said, I see two. Lauren B says I see two. You see and what? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Yeah, that's what they're saying in the chat room. There you go. I'm going to be watching it. It airs at 2 o'clock. Let's all tap in. And shout out to Vonice. She's listening now, too. She's edited everything. Vonice is the one who edited this whole thing. Vonice! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vonice. Vonice did a hell of a job editing this thing. Look. The Situation Shift television show is dope, man. Episode one, I want everybody to check it out. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Email me. Give me your opinions. Bobby came in here and gave us some great insight. Uh, we missed that from Uncle Bobby, and uh, I'm glad he was able to make it, even though it was under some some difficult uh, uh, con circumstances. You know, the loss of his great friend, and I can honestly say that Jim Brown was Bobby Glanton's great friend, like real friend, true friend. Here go Marcus right here. Mm. Marcus King. Kingdom. Hello. Uh, sir, <laughs> uh, we calling you and you're live on the radio. Uh, oh, I'm live on the radio. You're live on the radio right now. A lot of people want to hey. know what time does the situation shift air, sir? 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hold on, Joe, while I'm on the radio. I also have Tony Spire. He's on the radio now, too, I guess, since you put me right on the air. Exactly. The both of you guys are on the air. We want to know why is it airing so late. Everybody wants to know. Tell us what the chat room is saying right now. Oh. Why is it airing so late? Because yes. We, we wanted to have a primetime show that dealt with adults. So adults stay up till nine o'clock. My <laughs> Lord, my Lord. Uh, now, if you got children listeners, child listeners, then maybe we'll do a morning show. <laughs> we'll have you stop saying, hey, tonight on the show, we won't have you say tonight anymore. We'll have, have you say, good morning, with boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling me it worked out for him because uh, 
the Lakers, the Lakers season to be over uh, right about that same time. He said Whoa. it worked. Bobby said it worked out for you because the Lakers are about to go home. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He said he sent you a text offering you his condolences for your friend Jim Brown. He said you haven't responded yet. He must have sent it to my 424 number. He said you must have sent it to his uh, 424 number, his other phone. I didn't know how popular he was. He said he didn't know how popular you was. Now you know. Hey. Hey, Tony Spires, Marcus King, you guys did a great job on the television show, man. And I just wanted to thank you guys in public, in front of people who are watching this show. I appreciate that, though. Appreciate that, brother. You did your thing, too, man. Come on. Thank you, man. Thank you. 9 p.m. tonight, The Situation Shift airs. You're listening to the actual executive producers and directors uh, of the show. They're in here talking that talk, and we appreciate all the work they did for us. Thank you guys for giving us the heads up. I got more shows than Steve Harvey. Don't do me. Don't. I ain't got more money than Steve Harvey, so it must not be working. <laughs> Oh, man, we appreciate you guys, though. But thank you for answering the call, man. No problem. All right, now. We'll talk to you all in a bit. All right. (laughs) All right. So now y'all know, 9 p.m. tonight, the situation shift. Look, we're trying to get 100 copies of these sold. Who's going to get their copy of the Shrouded Lighthouse again? I told you you're going to get one hour free coaching with me if you order right now. If you order it right now, we're trying to get 100 copies out. Sarah, don't put up that damn birthday. I see you over there doing it. The birthday is tomorrow. We want you to support the book but you're here today. today. I'm going to be on the air tomorrow, too. But you're going to be on the podcast tomorrow, even a radio show tomorrow. All right. Anybody who <laughs> orders the Shrouded Lighthouse, I'm Give me urging. Birthday tomorrow. Mine. Here. Tomorrow your birthday. Yeah. 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 Come on. (laughs) So anybody who orders this, you're going to get a a, a free coaching session with me. It's an hour long. Um, And all you have to do is purchase the book. Go to my website, mrzowhat.com. And then, of course, take a digital snapshot of your or take a snapshot of your digital receipt then email it to me to vor106 at gmail.com i will reach out to you and say hey when you want to do the coaching the coaching is only available monday or friday saturday and sunday that's the only time i'm available to do the coaching hopefully we can get a lot of it out the way on friday because that's my day off let's get it let's get it let's get it we want a hundred copies sold. That's only two and a half books. Can I get everybody to jump in here right now? Go to mrzowhat.com and order your copy of the Shrouded Lighthouse. Also, tonight, I'm going to be at KBLA Talk 1580, the voice of reason. Back on KBLA Monday, going in, in, in. Of course, my homeboy Tony Massey is going to join me as well. Oh, that conversation on Saturday, Jesus. Oh, the relationship roundtable. Did you tell them about that? Your experience with the relationship roundtable. Was it good? Okay. (laughs) Oh, oh Lord. Go ahead. There's things going through my head right now because it's, I'm a person like, if I don't speak and I don't generalize a lot, a lot of things is normally coming from like my uh, personal experiences and everything. Mm-hmm. And some of the things that were said, I was like, what are you talking, what are you talking about? Like, what, you- like as far as like um, being, I haven't been in a, in a relationship over like five plus years, but I know people that have never been in long-term relationships, but they can, they can give me advice because you're a per- person, you know? And for someone to say that, Someone can't give you advice because they haven't been in a, a relationship 10 plus years. I think it's very wrong. <laughs> but that was one of the things. It was just a lot of different things and it was very strong personalities, but it was very 
it was a very good open discussion. I like the fact that everybody was able to share and was very mature about it. So if nobody was getting offended or anything, but I thought they would have gotten offended uh, after what I said. Oh, oh, to end the, end the night. Oh, what the end of the say? night. That was the perfect wrap up because that was the one thing that was missing was the spiritual aspect of everything. Because I think a lot of times, uh, a lot of people get stuck in their own ego that they really don't uh, branch out and realize that other people have different opinions and that everybody wasn't raised like you, everybody don't speak like you, and everybody have not had your certain experiences. I told everybody they were spiritual children and yeah. I was disappointed in them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how it, that's, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Woo <laughs> Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> was uh, it was a room full of people in there. Oh, <laughs> Big man. Phil was like, oh, Lord. Yeah. This <laughs> oh, boy. I was just like, uh-uh. <laughs> uh, I'm like, are you serious? But one mm. dude, I was like, are you serious? Mm. You think like that? A woman, was a, a woman is not, I don't, like I said there, I need a man, not a manager. Yeah, she said that. I need a Thank man, you. not a manager. Well, what's the difference? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here come Bobby. Come, just, on, Bobby. Come, come on, Bobby, Bobby ask your question, bro. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> said, what's the difference, God damn it? The thing is, is that I think when you get into managing and stuff like that, you're going to treat me like I'm your employee, and we're not going to roll like that. Because, like, that, that I'm, I don't work for you. I don't do – I mean, we do – we're a partnership. We do things together. I understand you, man. There are <laughs> okay. certain things, okay. and there are certain okay. things that, you, that we – that I Boy, can Bobby, take you your You got really good advice. now. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, you know what I'm saying? Normally, man. Bobby would have popped off Bobby, by now. You know, Bobby done got good at this no. podcast. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I ain't going for this one. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, 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 is people be wondering why things are so transactional in relationships is because they, they pull and they bring outside t- constructs into your relationship. And I'm a person. I'm not, a, I'm not your property. Well, well, what is a man since... If you're not a manager, uh, what is it then? What is a man? I mean, there's a, the well, You said you wanted a man. man. Yes, I want and not a, a man. A, a, a man that is secure within themselves. He comes with his, his his own set of experiences and everything like that. But when we come together, it's like we're learning off each other. It's more of like uh, like a deep dive or like a uh, like an education on each other. You know what I'm saying? Like Bobby, you're learning man. each other and y'all coming. You done really got <laughs> good at this. I, what? I can't. I'm just blown away, what? man. I never what? seen Bobby just sit there. He's like, yes. No, I didn't say that. Bobby just said, I, I just, I just normally Bobby be like, hold on now. Wait, <laughs> no, wait, no. now see. Now see, that's what he did. Bobby is listening. Oh, I'm no, bugging no, out. No, but what I said. And I told them this, I said, and and everybody there, I said, and I'm not saying that what I'm saying is right. I'm talking about for me. And because, and that's probably why I'm 42, I'm almost 43 years old, and I've never been married. Maybe that's it. Maybe maybe I need to, you know, but I was listening from everything. Like, in my life, my experiences, that was from me, okay? And Mm -hmm. I've always been called, I've been called combative in relationships because I fight against the whole the thing of that you finna treat me like I'm your kid and I'm not I don't I don't roll like that. Mm. Go ahead, Bobby, get me. No, it's not about <laughs> getting you. It's about getting me uh, to understand that. And this is my growth, if you will. I'm sitting here, man. I'm quiet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I ain't trying to change anybody because I gotta know what's going on here. Mm. And when I don't feel I'm being effective by voicing my opinion, I, I tend to keep it to myself mm-hmm. because I don't want you or anybody else to think that I'm trying to tell you what to do. I just want to understand what you're saying and then just to pose that with where I'm at and how I, I view the men, the man-woman dynamic. Mm-hmm. I, submission, I wish we had a better word for it because there are times when a woman has genetically a expertise that I will never have. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and in some ways I'm envious of that because women can be nurturers in ways that men never can. Because it's physical for a woman to be a nurturer as well as mental. Mm-hmm. Where with a man, the only thing that we can do to nurture a child is, is through our experience and our instruction and our leadership and our protection and our provision. But a woman is uniquely designed 
where the relationship with a child, a man can't replicate that. That's a hundred percent right there, but uh, what you got to say now, Sarah? <laughs> I would be. I, the thing is, is that we needed I, that wisdom, but, man. But I understand. That's what I mean. That's that's what I'm saying. Like I, I'm open to mm. to hear advice and things like that, or or hear other perspectives. I'm just telling you. I'm just simply saying mine right now. I'm not saying it's not going to grow and evolve and things like that. But it's just like if you, you know what Sarah me, did to I me. Think, that's it. You know what Sarah did to me at this round table. Hey. I'm the host, <laughs> Sarah. I'm telling people when they could talk. You know how I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah yelled out, you forgot me. I said, oh, Lord. You just skipped right past me. I said, what's happening? I'm going to come to you, Sarah. Jesus. Sarah was very combative in argument. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I know. She she just told you why. She she need to manage a man, you know. (laughs) She said she don't want a manager. She want a man. You just gave exhibit A, you was in there managing at his symposium. <laughs> but apparently you want a manager. No, but, but Bobby, okay, I come from different experience, though. Being, <laughs> being, if being a former person that was in the lesbian lifestyle for 10 years when I was in my 20s or whatever, like, I, my, my, my philosophy, like, with dating guys is, like, if I'm with a guy that I was more of a dude to my girlfriends than you are to me, I totally dismiss you. Hold on. Hold on. So I, you do want management? I know. I don't. But I, no, it's not on management. Yes, you do. You want oh, management. Like <laughs> Sarah well, wants management. Just, well, maybe I do. Maybe I need a supervisor. Maybe that's a better word. For <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we, can, we, can, we can make that happen. Supervisor will remove management if, it, if that sets you off that way. You know what oh I mean? God. If it sets you into that combative place. <laughs> you know, because words can be... Um, Unbelievably powerful, and especially when people can co uh, co opt the, the 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 intention of a word. Because mm-hmm. uh, sometimes, just the inflection of your voice can 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 drive a person either closer or further away from you. Mm-hmm. So and does her voice drive her oh closer or further away from you, Bob? <laughs> no, sometimes I have to realize that 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 I need to keep listening and shut the fuck up because I didn't understand until right now where some of this comes from in terms of what you just said. And I had to hold it together when you said that you used to be uh, 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 a... a she had her liquor yeah. license. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, uh, your liquor license. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, but it's I mean... It's expired now. Now, that says a lot about... You know, the skin you're in right now, mm-hmm. to oh, be able to talk openly about, you know, the, the transformations <laughs> that you've gone through along your journey. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I ain't been but a one-way player, and um, oh. and that's oh, called what? and that's called me enough play, uh, problems, you know what I mean? Because I've had men who were attracted to me, and it, and it, and it caused, uh, first, I'm, I'm like, what, what kind of signals did I send out to... For that to happen, number one, because I have never had an interest in being with a man. It's not you, you know? it's them. Huh? <laughs> it's not you, it's them. <laughs> but it just feels like it's me if somebody done come up to you and told me told me that they like me like that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't see where that came from. Bobby, you know? can you help us, brother? What is a one-way player? Oh, one way. Player. I'm going that way toward a woman. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there ain't no side ways, so it ain't right there. You know, there ain't no detours. I got that. you. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, that's what it is. Hey, uh, Phil, we was just trying to we was just trying to find out what day uh, or what time the TV show airs. But then Marcus and and Tony called us and said it's going to air at 9 p.m. tonight. Okay. Thank All you, right. brother. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, by the same time, your Lakers get eliminated. Oh! Bobby talking. <laughs> yeah, Bobby Glanton, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but thank you, brother. I appreciate it. All right. Bobby. He said, what's, what's up? up? Man? I'll be in touch with you. Oh, man. Yeah. No, we can't have... Bobby <laughs> said, he's a one-way player. Yes, right. I'm only going one way, one way headed man. towards a woman. You understand me? <laughs> toward the fish house. <laughs> to, to the fish house. You understand me? Hey! hey. <laughs> Whoa! On a 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hey, Bobby, tell them where they can find you one more time. And I want Sarah to do the same thing. Okay. We're about to get up out of here. All A right. One way player. You know? On Instagram, Boy. Uncle Bobby's Country Corner, where real men don't play. Uh, my Facebook page is my name, Bobby Glanton Smith. My email address is G L A N T O N S M I T H B at gmail.com. And again, man, I just. Got to tell you, boy, this always warms my heart to be in a circle where we, we bound that way, man. Mm -hmm. We've earned the right to be friends. I want everybody to know that's that. That's 100% you know, true. We done been there. That yeah. is 100% true, man. And shit, I don't give a fuck what's going on, Bobby. You can always fall through here and tell me what you need to tell me, brother. Yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> you know, he I'm know that. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. You know, I'm going to always call first. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't know, see, it's been totally different. If I just showed up in here, we'd spent 20 minutes. Man, but Bobby could have came in here. And, and I first, this is, this is the look. I would have gave him the look. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But then now that you're here, well, fuck it, that's, sit on down. I mean, we, we lose 20 <laughs> minutes when I do that. I, you know, because he'll start jabbing and stuff, then I start countering it. I was like, damn, man, I forgot what I came in to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, the situation shift tonight, yeah. please don't forget, we're trying to push for 100 copies of this. That's only two and a half books. It's six. It's six hundred people in the chat room right now. Right. Everybody, buy a copy of the book. You're gonna get a one hour of coaching. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. Don't forget, get your he is risen. I think I got three more bags of these. Mm. You mm. know, doc, mm. hey, Doctor Russell, keep me. Uh, <laughs> he keep me with them uh, risen, man, mm. because people love it. I feel like a dope dealer at the lounge mm -hmm. because every time I walk in the lounge, somebody go. I need two. <laughs> yeah, I, need, I need two bottles. So, yo, yeah. this is a good thing. I want everybody to support the black-owned businesses we talked about. Shepherd Sweets, Total Package Energy, Bill Sauce, of course, RussellHerbals.com, as well as MrZoeWhat.com. Please continue to support, 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 support. See you tomorrow, Doc. And we appreciate everybody. Rest and in peace, your, Jim Brown. And happy birthday eve to Zoe. Yes, sir. Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow is the well, birthday. 51. Tomorrow. 51. Two. 52. Yeah. Man, you went from 50 to 50. You're doing the two, by, you're doing the two, uh, two, two a year. I did it. Stop, I mean, it, just it, stop it, Bobby. Now, did you? Know, it just seemed like it was yesterday you had your 50th birthday, man. Now you give me a turn 52, man. Yeah, the clock man. ain't playing, boy. The Ooh. clock ain't playing. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait for it to be over. What? Oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Oh my god. I did a whole lot with that shit there, boy. <laughs> okay, come on. Damn, man, I already started trying to push the years back. <laughs> Get away, <laughs> goddammit. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. Number love, number love, and appreciation for everybody who does, who did hit the super chat, who showed the love, the cash app, uh, who bought a couple of books. We got a couple of books sold. Yay. We got more reasons sold than books for sure. But I understand why. When I see y'all next, it'll be tonight <laughs> on the KBLA uh, radio station. That's Tavis Smiley's radio station, KBLA 1580. Uh, trust me, man, we're going to be on fire tonight. Got a great topic. Tony Massey going to join me. I'll holler at y'all later on. All right? Deuces. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it, bro. <laughs> no.